with your spirit, O Lord, and renew, renew the face of the earth. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul, bless your name, how great are your ways in the Good morning, and welcome to Notre Dame. Today, of course, we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, and Mass will be celebrated for the repose of the soul of Judy Bader. It's good to have you with us. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to lead the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church and every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, Fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. 
Now there were devout Jews from every nation under the heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one of them heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and amazed. They asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? How then does each of them, each of us hear them in his own language? We are Parthians, Medes, Heliumites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet, we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, Lord send, send out, out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord! The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works, pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, Lord send, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons. We were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth that proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me. And you also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. 
But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I've always loved Pentecost. As I told you a couple years ago, um, when Bishop Troutman, Bishop Troutman asked me when I would like to be ordained a deacon, uh, you know, on what date, I looked at the calendar and I said, well, what about on Pentecost? That would be appropriate. And he said, oh, that would be fine. And so I was ordained on Pentecost Sunday. I always liked the idea that, you know, we're given this gift of the Holy Spirit and we're sent forth. But at the same time as all that is true, there's one thing about Pentecost that always makes me a little bit melancholy, and that is at the very end of Mass. Um, I always sing that Alleluia. You know, the Mass is ended, go in peace, Alleluia, Alleluia. And once we finish that, the Easter season is over, and that always kind of makes me sad, you know, especially as I'm getting older. Uh, I'm thinking about Easter more and more every year and pondering the, the mystery of it all. And I realize that it is a day and a season in which God shows us how much he truly loves us. And Jesus showed us how far he was willing to go for us. That is, he was willing to die on the cross and rise again. Um, and it, it really is a beautiful reality. And, you know, we've promised everlasting life. We're promised the resurrection. And every year, I get one year older and one year closer to that day. And I realize that that is starting to weigh upon me a little bit. And so when I'm going through the Easter season, living through the Easter season, rejoicing through the Easter season, it... It gives me a sense of reassurance, gives me a sense of peace, gives me a sense of happiness. And so when we sing all those alleluias at the end of this Mass, it always kind of makes me sad a little bit because Easter is over. But the thing is this. First of all, we all need to remind ourselves that Easter's never really over. You know, if you read any sort of theology, at some point the writer will say, we are an Easter people, and that is, everything we do is with everlasting life in mind. Everything we do, we are supposed to be thinking about the Lord who loved us enough to give his life. Every sacrifice we make, every good deed we do, we're trying to remind ourselves that, okay, I'm supposed to be living the life that mirrors that of Jesus Christ. But... So that's one way to console myself, understanding that Easter's not really over. Also, though, we're not just an Easter people. We are supposed to be a Pentecostal people. And that means we are supposed to have this sense of purpose and this sense of mission. And that's why I asked to be ordained on, Easter, on Pentecost Sunday all those years ago, because I was embarking on a life of ministry, and that meant I was embarking on a life of mission and a life of purpose and a life of working, not, working for God. And that was great, and it was exciting, and it's exciting still. And so every year on Pentecost, I still enjoy the day, even though it ends with a hint of sadness. But I enjoy the day, I enjoy the celebration, I enjoy the feast, well, because of what's in that first reading. If you think about that first reading, there were the apostles. Now, they were sitting up in a room, praying, talking, doing whatever they did. Um, Jesus had told them to go back to Jerusalem and wait. And he would send them the paraclete, the advocate. He would send the spirit to them. They probably didn't know exactly what that meant, but Jesus said so, and so they did it. And so they were sitting there, thinking, praying for 10 days, and then, 
the Holy Spirit came upon them. Tongues of fire over their heads and they just couldn't contain themselves and they ran out into the streets and began to preach and teach and there were people from all those nations which we heard about and it was the day the church was born. It was a day that the apostles weren't just followers of Jesus Christ, but they became witnesses to everything he had done. And not just, and that's not where the story ends, because they did speak to all those people from all those places. And the point behind that is, this isn't just a faith that, or a sacrifice on Jesus' part that was for some small group, or even for some small nation. It was a faith that was meant to be shared with the world, and it's a gift of salvation that's meant to be shared by everybody. And we are a part of that mission, the mission to share the faith, the mission to help people to accept the gift of salvation that Jesus won for them. And that really is something wonderful. And it's not just for deacons and priests, of course. I understand that better than I did 28 years ago. But we are all part of Christ's mission and we are given this gift of the Holy Spirit so that we can go out there and accomplish the mission, help Jesus in his saving work. And it really is a great day. So I love the Feast of Pentecost. And yes, it will make me a little sad when we end Mass and I say Easter's over, but you know what? Provided I live that long, <laughs> we'll be able to celebrate Easter again next year rejoice through that Easter season again, think more about everlasting life. And in the meantime, I'm supposed to keep doing exactly that, going out there, living the faith well so that other people may come to see and believe. And really, that's what we're all supposed to do. So on this Feast of Pentecost, make sure you remind yourself, you're supposed to be a missionary, you're supposed to be a witness, you're supposed to be somebody who shares what God has done for you and Help others to come to appreciate his presence, appreciate his love, and come to accept that, sal that gift of salvation that Jesus won for us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers and petitions before God, our Almighty Father. The Holy Spirit may renew the face of his holy church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The gospel may be proclaimed to the entire world through word and deed and by the example of the faithful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Spirit may enkindle in all a fire for his love to bring aid to the suffering and to comfort the afflicted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Spirit may fill the hearts of his faithful and guide us to lives of holiness and commitment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Judy Bader, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all those who have died, that they may know the joy of eternal life in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, 
you have given us your spirit that we may bring to you all that we need. Hear and answer the prayers we have offered, we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who has humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities, and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts singing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Judy Bader, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And now, since we cannot have regular communion together, please pray with me this prayer so that we may have spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, 
who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church. Safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. I'd like to thank you all for being with us today, and I hope you have a good and holy Pentecost. Um, keep asking for that gift of the Holy Spirit to be poured into your heart, because, well, we all need that guidance, that fire, that sense of God's love, so we can go out there and be the good Christian witnesses that we are called to be. So, keep doing your best. There's one more note, and that is somebody has a birthday coming up on Tuesday. As you can see, the excitement has exhausted her, <laughs> but uh, Ginger's going to be 12. And so it'll be a, a, a great day. All the kids will sing happy birthday in school to her, and it's always kind of funny. But um, anyway, she's been a very good dog these last 12 years. Hopefully she has quite a few left in her. Anyway, have a good week.